Welcome everyone. So today we're gonna integrate monday.com with some external services such as Typeform and MailerLite. We're gonna do that with the help of Make or uh, Integromat if you're more familiar with that term. We are going to look at how to save a snapshot of a project in Monday. So to say, so say that you have started a project already or you have finished the planning of it at least and you have all your tasks in a project word in Monday and you want to save a snapshot in order to have future reference of that uh, the project on how it was when you had it readily planned. Then after that you can save more snapshots as you go along with the project of course uh, in order to compare it during different uh, uh, phases of the project or at different milestones for example. So that is quite a useful uh, scenario that we are going to look at, uh, where we actually save that kind of snapshot in uh, a Google Sheet. So it will be one uh, Google Sheet file created in a Google Drive, where each row is a Monday uh, item or a Monday task, and uh, it's progress up to that point. So the uh, Scenario itself looks like this, that we get a webhook from Monday. The uh, webhook will signal for make then to retrieve the data from Monday, the whole row that uh, from the project overview of the project that we're interested in. Then we will create a new spreadsheet in Google Sheets for that project and add one row titles of uh, the task uh, columns for example, date, status, name of the task, and so on. After that, we will iterate and all the tasks that are connected to the uh, Monday project overview, get each of that task's data in the next uh, module that we see here in front of us. And after that, of course, we will, in our newly created spreadsheet, uh, create one row per task, as I said earlier. So it's quite easy, if we have a look at the project overview that is quite familiar from the webinars that I have had, then we have a column here on the very right called create snapshot sheets. I am gonna do that on uh, this project whiskey. So when I click the create snapshot, then after a while we will have a new snapshot saved in my Google Drive that contains all the tasks that are connected here, all 25 of them, and that snapshot will be called Project Whiskey and Today's Date. Let's have a look here in my Google Drive. So here we can see that it's created and we see now also that the tasks are ticking in. So as we could see earlier when I talked about the scenario itself, we get, got Project Whiskey up here in the name, snapshot, and then the Today's Date. We had one row created for all the uh, titles uh, of all the columns in the Monday board uh, that, is the, that has the tasks of uh, this particular project. And then we have all the data ticking in uh, as expected. Okay, so that is great for having a snapshot uh, created. But if you also wanted to keep it quite organized, then you want also a specific folder for your project in your Google Drive, where this snapshot is saved, especially if you're gonna create many snapshots for one and the same project. Of course, want all of them in the same uh, folder together with all the other project files that you might have created or materials that you have uh, created before the project or even received from someone else that you want to save in there. So, in our next scenario, then we are going to create a folder in Google Drive and we're gonna put the link of that folder back here in monday.com. We can see that we have two examples here already. We don't yet have an example for Project Whiskey. So we are, have right now a uh, webhook set on the project ID column because I want to create folders looking like this where it says the project ID project files. Simple as that. So I am gonna give it an ID and I think that 0009 is not taken. So that's the ID I'm gonna give it. So we will see the result of the make scenario quite directly in our Google Drive. So now we have this project file folder created as we can see here in Google Drive. And the way that this make scenario worked 
was that the webhook was received from Monday as usual. Then we got the whole uh, row of the Monday project and that is in order to get the column data from the project ID column. Then we use the simple create a folder in Google Drive where you can put it wherever you want of course if you want it in a subfolder and so on and of course in theory you could even create a whole structure of subfolders directly for your project that you have snapshots in one subfolder you have a previous material in another and so on you can do quite a lot of advanced stuff here if you really want to when it comes to folder structure but in this case I just had it simple so we can see here it says text project files and the text is project ID column in Monday. After that we have another Monday module that just takes ID of the newly created folder and put it on the end of a URL as well as the name of the folder to put as the text. Then we get this really nicely formatted URL back into our Monday board. You can see it right here if we go back to the board here again. That is been put back here as 0009 project files. That was our second scenario and what is very nice about these two scenarios is that they could go together. As I said earlier we could have an advanced structure with a lot of subfolders and after that we can have all our snapshots actually created if we have a look in here in the other scenario that just created a snapshot we could have it ordered into our Google Drive however we want. So we can have it automatically put into a specific folder. So move a file and then we can have the file ID could be the spreadsheet ID that we have created and a new drive location could be mapped in with the help of that URL for our newly created folder. Uh, next we are going to have a look at another scenario. This scenario will the contact information from uh, all the people that are involved in a project actually in your contact registry you and connect your projects to specific contacts in order to have them set as keep posted here or they could be called stakeholders for example let's change that name now already but these stakeholders should be kept posted about updates for the project over in type form I have uh, prepared a registration form so type form is one of the nicer looking and easy to handle integration wise at least <laughs> uh, formulary services out there. It's quite easy to get all the metadata connected to each question and then we can just map it in easily into Monday again. We can fill this registration form in now already. We can say Vigo. Let's have the last name testing in order to differentiate it a bit from the other test row that I had for myself. We can put any phone number here and then my role would be senior implementation consultant. There we go. So after that type form has been uh, submitted now we can actually have a look inside both make and inside Monday to see where it landed. In Monday webinar contact registry board that I created here. As you can see we got all the answered answers in here as I typed them earlier which is expected of course from this kind of integration. We will now have a look at the scenario on that happened and as you can see it is quite a simple scenario. All we do is to have a webhook set up against type form, which is very simple to do. It's called watch responses sent. And it will be automatically created more or less inside type form when you select it here in make. Then it will create an item directly in Monday in the specific contact registry board. You can see here that I put the first name and the last name as the item name. And then we have some of the other information mapped in here on uh, array of column values to change. You can see also that it's quite easy as I said how to map all the questions and their answers because all of them are under mappable answers here in the bottom. We also have a Monday module that updates the status in that registry to a label called webinar. We're gonna get more into that later because that will trigger another make scenario 
which in turn will send that contact information over to MailerLite. When we want to connect this specific contact person to a specific project, then we go to our project overview and we just select, in this case, Vigo Testing. But we could also select more people here, for example, my colleague Frederick. This is quite useful for another make scenario that I'm gonna show, which is to keep these two people posted about things that happen in the project based on actual actions in the project overview. So I have another webhook set for when you change the status to execution in uh, Monday, because then it will send an email to all stakeholders that we have selected. So let's take the top project here, which has two people as stakeholders in it, uh, myself and uh, Frederick. So when I select execution there, then we can see then the item is asked for the, in the project overview. And then we start iterating and getting all the contacts that are actually connected to that project. Similarly, as we did for the create snapshots. So in the webinar contact registry, we're actually getting the emails of the two top people here that were connected here in the project overview. Those two. And then after that, an email is automatically sent to those two persons. Now we're going through all but one of the make scenarios that I was going to talk about. And I mentioned it earlier. It was the one that was chained to the type form where the type form first landed into Monday as a new contact sheet or a contact row rather. And then we saw that uh, the same scenario also triggered a status change in the contact registry. That trigger, as I mentioned briefly, triggers another make scenario which puts that contact into MailerLite. So MailerLite is used more as a marketing tool to send out automated emails and in order to manage marketing campaigns and so on. So let's have a look at that make scenario. We have one webhook going in from the status change that was made by the previous make scenario and that one gets the whole contact registry item. So in this case, it will be, for example, the top row here. And then it simply adds that subscriber to a specific group. In this case, I have selected a group that I have created here, temporary for my own webinar. I simply map in the email, in the email field. And then of course, again, in the custom field email, if there is one, and then we have the name, in this case, the item name equals the contact name. I don't have a last name column. I could have done that in the, if I wanted to in the type form make integration scenario, but I wanted to put both of them in the same name column. But one way to get both the first name and the last name as separate entities in Monday would be to have them in hidden text columns and then they could be pulled from those hidden fields while the item name could still be the full name. Then we have the company, that's a Monday text column. And then we also have uh, other fields here that we could have pulled from Typeform, but then of course, uh, that's always how much do you want people to fill in forms and uh, how much do we just want their email address, right? So this one will uh, be triggered when this specific row gets the status webinar. Now you can see that I'm doing this manually so that we can see the full output that MailerLite actually has created this specific contact. Let's have a look here in MailerLite. So here we now have two contacts, rather. We have one, Frederick at omnitas.se, and as you can see, even though two typeform forms were inputted with the same email address, vigo at omnitas.se, that is not possible to have a duplicate later in MailerLite, which is why we still only see one MailerLite contact for that. We could also, to the tie form to Monday scenario, have a look at how that duplicate check could have looked like if we wanted one already there. So that would be, for example, if we have another module here, search items in a board by column values, then we can actually search for the same email that was inputted already in the registry that exists. And then we could map out that if, for example, ID 
fifth, then it would uh, do nothing, but if it doesn't take fifth, then it would keep on creating an item and so on, and then send it over to MailerLite. So there are ways actually to manage duplicates also when using Integromat, and that has a wide range of applications that we often do for several of our clients. So I hope that this is of uh, help for you when you're making your own make scenarios, and otherwise please feel free to reach out to us and we could give you a helping hand. That's it, thanks for watching and please subscribe to the Omnitas YouTube channel.